The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Coming up on Life Today, Bible teacher Beth Moore encourages us to discover spiritual discernment. Can anybody but me just stand to be smarter than they are? Anybody? Just could stand to know something that you don't. Anybody could stand a little supernatural wisdom of the activated mind of Christ in them. Understanding the wisdom and direction that God gives believers as we spend Wednesdays in the Word. Welcome you to this program, Life Today. Betty and I are so thrilled to have you. I'm James Robinson, and we are holding in our hand right here, at least I'm holding it, <laughs> Beth Moore's Blessed Mornings and Restful Nights. I love that because these are devotions to begin and end the day. Betty, uh, Beth is teaching on discernment and discerning the spirits. There used to be a program called Father Knows Best. Well, there is a father who knows best, and that's God. Now, dealing with discernment, you want to discern what's in the Father's heart. Let me give you one other little thought before Beth just takes off on this. If you want to get a quick spirit check and discern your own spirit about certain things, is that spirit that's rising up in you redemptive or destructive? Are you really wanting to redeem a situation or do damage? pretty easy to see which spirit is guiding. Let's let Beth teach us a little bit more clearly about spiritual discernment. Enjoy, Beth. First Corinthians chapter two. I wanna begin reading at verse six and I'm gonna read through the end of the chapter. Lord, speak to us, speak to us. It says in verse 6 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature. That word will become important to us later. But not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, now I always love to think what it would be like to hear something like this for the very first time. And I'm hoping so much someone is here or someone is there uh, listening to this scripture that has a brand new life verse and philosophy of life. It says this, however, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Now that right there deserves a really good amen. amen. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has ever conceived what God has planned for those who love him. And it says something in verse 10. I've heard that verse a number of times, but I can remember the first time I ever locked in on what came immediately after it because it is of utmost importance to us. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. How has he revealed it? Say it again. By a spirit. spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. Would anybody just be willing to understand something that God has so willingly given us? What if we could receive a fresh understanding of what God was doing in our lives and what he had partitioned for us in this season of our lives? What would happen if we got some fresh understanding? Verse 13, this is what we speak, not in words taught to us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths and spiritual words. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him, 
and he cannot understand them because they are, and here are two key words for this entire series, spiritually discerned, because they are spiritually discerned. Everybody say spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned. Say it one more time way down here. The spiritual man makes judgments about all things, but he himself, notice it doesn't say about all people, about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? And then one of the most revolutionary statements we will ever see in all of Scripture, but we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ, that for every single one of us who has received Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, and this is something you could do today. You could do it in the next five minutes. This is not something that takes a year. This is something you can do this very day. When we trust Christ Jesus as our personal Savior, and we receive the grace gift of the cross and the power of the resurrection in that moment. So for all of us, to whom Christ Jesus is Savior, in the moment that we believed and that we made that confession of faith, His Holy Spirit took up residency in us. We, we did not necessarily feel a thing. We could have gone on just like we had been in the last 48 hours. We did not feel any different physically uh, than we did. Maybe it, it would take days to really uh, come to an understanding of what Christ had started uh, to do in us in that moment. But we are told it is a spiritual fact that in that moment, the Spirit of Christ takes up residency in us. And we have something huge that has overtaken us. The Holy Spirit literally lives in our vessel. Now, here's what I've come to tell you over the weeks uh, that we have ahead. We only touch the tip of the iceberg of what the Holy Spirit would do in us and through us if we would let Him. Uh, that we don't just have the power to act. What I want to discuss with you over the weeks to come is that we have the power to know things that human thinking cannot reason. We have the ability through the Spirit of Christ and, and the activated mind of Christ in us to know what we could not possibly know in human terms. So often we, we don't do the thing because we don't know what the thing is. Am, am, am I speaking to anybody? That to have the knowledge to somehow be able to know what is impossible for the human rationale to wrap around. This is what we see as a promise in Scripture. And it tells us in that, in that ninth verse, it says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him, verse 10, but He has revealed it to us by a spirit. Uh, that's the same word for which we get a revelation in the last book of the Bible. Bible, uh, apocalypto in the Greek language, when it, and it means to have something that is hidden, unveiled, uh, something that is uh, somehow revealed in very often a progressive uh, kind of revelation before our very eyes, something of the Spirit to take off the cover, to disclose to us. And, and I want you to just see with me for a few minutes what we could have if we were willing to walk in cooperation with what God wants to do. If we would really just engage in this thing, what would the Holy Spirit be capable of doing in regular people, regular flesh and blood, uh, uh, folks like us living the life, going to work every day, uh, doing, doing the thing at home and all our human relationships, what would happen if the Holy Spirit truly overtook us, what would happen? What is He capable of doing? Because what we're going to be studying over the weeks to come is this thing we call spiritual discernment. Are we able to spiritually discern? If we were, what, what would it look like? How do we know when God is trying to tell us something that is not black and white? Because I don't know about you, but I live in a whole lot of gray. Anybody else? I mean, there, there are a whole lot of black and white things in the scriptures, but, but we get into life and, and a whole lot of it is that very dull, uh, very undoing color of gray. And we really don't know what to do because we don't know what's up. And, and maybe we could, 
maybe God would begin to work through his Holy Spirit in such a way within us that the very mind of Christ would be activated in us and we would know what could not be otherwise known. That's what I'm presenting to you in this series. Acts chapter 11, verse 12, Peter said something uh, to this effect. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. That the Holy Spirit had told Peter, uh, do not hesitate to go forward with this group of people. I mean, like, how did he know that? He, he didn't say that Christ spoke uh, uh, verbally and, and audibly from the heavens to him. He said, the Spirit told me to have no hesitation. How did he know that? I don't think he heard the heavens split open and a voice fall uh, from, the, from the skies. I believe he was spiritually discerning it. Go without hesitation. How would we know that when it happened? Another place, Acts 15, 28 says this. It's, it's the apostles writing to a new group of Gentile Christians and, and they say these words, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. How did they know it seemed good to the Holy Spirit? Because somehow they were walking with Christ in such a way that they could discern the pleasure of the Spirit. I, do, would anybody else like that but me? Listen, if, if, if God's capable of doing it, I want it. I, I, I want it. I want it. So if, if, if this is possible, if I could know in many instances, not in every, we don't have the kind of not, we don't possess all knowledge, but we could know a whole lot more than we do. Anybody besides me, I'll even just ask for a hand if, if there's anybody that just wants to show one. Could anybody but me just stand to be smarter than they are? <laughs> anybody? Just could stand to know something that you don't. Anybody could stand a little supernatural wisdom of the activated mind of Christ in them. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. I love it when it seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us. Isn't that a beautiful thing? <laughs> Sometimes things seem good to me, but I come to the end of the rope and, feel, and realize that it did not feel good, obviously, to the Holy Spirit. Acts 16, 6 and 7, look at these words. So it says, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. Well, I'm not positive about this, but in a lot of uh, the verses that if we were able to line them up against one another, a lot of times when it was an audible voice coming from Christ himself from the, the heavenlies or, or somehow through a vision to them or a dream of some kind, um, it would say Christ. The fact that we're being told it was the Holy Spirit of Christ instead of just Christ himself, and we know it is his spirit, but I'm saying is the, is the intonation of this that this is the discernment of the Holy Spirit coming from inside their hearts that this is not right. We're not supposed to go here. Something is up here, and we're not supposed to move forward into this place at this time. Verse 7, when they came to the border of Mycenae, they tried to enter Bithynia. But the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. And so it says, then they passed on and went to the next place. All right, what kind of Holy Spirit is it that honestly we could begin toward a certain uh, uh, area of employment? Uh, we could be on the verge of, of, uh, of starting some area of ministry in this part of the city or this part of the state or this part of the world. How blessed would we be? If the Holy Spirit was activated enough in us, we were walking yielded enough to the authority of Christ that honestly when we came to a crossroad, we would know whether to go to the right or to the left. Could anybody stand that kind of knowledge besides me? I want some direction. I need some direct. I want to do the God thing. I don't know about you, but we're listen, I don't know when the last time was you just came to the reality that this thing is going fast. I mean, just fast. I mean, when you just glance in the mirror and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, like, whoa, when did that happen? And I'm saying this to you young things, it does happen just that quickly. We were you yesterday, we were you. And now we're us, and I don't want that to scare you, but when, when you get to be my age, you're really going for quality of life, and Jesus is your quality. And, and here's what I want to say to you. We don't have time to just be wandering around in the desert. 
We want to get on to God's will. We want to be doing the God thing. I don't want to be wasting time just walking in circles out in a wilderness. I want to get on with God. Look at one another and say, get on with God. Well, if we're going to get on with him, we've got to know where we're going. And the Holy Spirit is capable of telling us that. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 7 through 9, it says this. I do not want to see you now and make only a passing visit. This is Paul speaking to the church in Corinth. I hope to spend some time with you, if the Lord permits. But I will stay on it. Ephesus until Pentecost, verse 9, because a great door of effective work has been opened to me, and there are many who oppose me. Okay, wait just a second, because something here looks like an oxymoron. Would anybody agree? With I mean, like, okay, a great door has opened for me. So he knows he's supposed to be there. Paul knows that that door has been opened by the Holy Spirit for him. He said, a great and effectual door has been opened unto me, one of the versions says. But then he says, but there are many who oppose me. Now, wouldn't we immediately, uh, when we're not walking in the spirit that Paul is talking about, wouldn't we immediately assume if there's that much opposition, that cannot be the will of God? Anybody? I mean, wouldn't you just assume that, okay, that kind of opposition, isn't that what must have happened before that time in Acts chapter 16? Surely they came upon opposition. They went, you know what? We're not supposed to be here. This is a news flash for us in Scripture. Opposition does not mean you are not heading exactly the place God wants you to be. It's not going to be because of a lack of opposition. Opposition can be something that arises because we are flat dead on to the will of God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Can anybody step in that with me? I mean, you can be, it can be that you're getting opposition because you are doing exactly what God has called you to do. How would you know the difference? It will be spiritually discerned. No eye has ever seen. No ear has ever heard. No mind has ever conceived what God has planned for those who love him, but it is revealed by his spirit. We can't just make assumptions based on, uh, on the quality of the life around us and the acceptance of our peers that, that this must be where we're supposed to operate. It could be right there that God goes, you know what, this isn't my will for you. And we want to move on with the anointing of God. We never want to get in a place where we think, you know, this is just where I'm going to stay for the rest of my life. Listen, when, when God's anointing moves on, we want to go with it. I got to know, we don't get to see a cloudy pillar anymore. There, there's no fire by night anymore. Now the Holy Spirit that went in front of them and all those manifestations has overtaken us. We are now the manifestation of the work of God in this time element. We are it. Girlfriend, you are the cloudy pillar. Uh, you, 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 guy friend, you, you are the fire by night. I have to remember my guy friends because there's some of them right here in this room. And I know there are some on the other side of that screen. We got to know we're it. We're what he wants to fire up. We're what he wants to lead. We are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Well, Beth, you have got the passion and the fire, and I pray, Father, that every one of us will be spirit-led and that we will begin to develop a very keen spiritual discernment. In Jesus' name, I pray this. I want to say not only thanks to Beth for blessing you, but I want, to, I want to thank you for what I sense is an obvious hunger, not only for the Word of God, but also the will of God. And I think that in your heart, there is a legitimate desire to share the love of God. The viewers of Life Today, Betty, have made it very clear. If we see a very legitimate need, and there's a realistic way to effectively deal with it, give us a chance. I honestly think people like to do this if they see what works. And compassion works. And I want to show you something that, you know, we experienced this with our own daughter, with her feet needing to be straightened. And some of our closest friends have had this challenge, but around the world there are many children who can't walk without a miracle to address foot deformities, club foot, and our viewers and the mission workers have shown us what love can do. 
I think you're going to be very, very excited about what you're about to see. And I think you're going to be one of the first ones to extend your hand and say, I'm going to be the miracle for that child or that person. Watch. This is Dariel. Um, he's a six-year-old boy who didn't get help when he's a baby. But it's, it's not too late for him. At the moment, life's a little difficult for Dariel. He can't play baseball with the other boys. He can't play soccer. When I asked him what he gets to do, um, it's kind of reduced to playing little games on somebody's phone. Perhaps that's because nobody laughs at him then and nobody points out what's, what's different about his feet. We have seen, we've seen what the future looks like for a boy like Dariel. It will be very hard for him to get a job, hard for him to to get married, to make a life, because so many people think there must be something really wrong with you if there's something like this wrong with your feet. And it reminded me of the story. Remember the story of, you know, Jesus is in someone's house and he's teaching, and four guys have a friend who needs Jesus' help, but he can't get there by himself. Do you remember what they did? They put him on a pallet, and they literally went up on the roof and cut a hole in the roof and lowered their friend to the feet of Jesus. And that's what we want to do, not just for Dariel, but for thousands of children around the world. We want to pick them up and we want to lay them at the feet of Jesus. And the amazing thing is that not only are we going to bring healing to his legs, we want to bring the hope of Jesus Christ to his heart. We want this boy to know God loves you so much. He's not gonna leave you like this. Would you help us? How do you feel when you see that, honey? To me, that's really big <laughs> and it's exciting because we had the opportunity to make such a big difference in these children's lives, to know that they would be able to walk someday normally and to play and to have fun and to grow up strong and healthy. It just, it would make such a difference for them. And I'm, I'm just right there with this. I want to help. I hope you, your hearts were touched and you want to help to help a child be able to walk. You know, we put braces on our first child, our daughter feet, because they were towed in where she would trip. And uh, they were big, heavy braces. This is just a tiny little brace. And this one is in the extreme corrective position when they have turned from in to the final stage of correcting a child. When you, when you get a child and they're very young as a, as a little infant, very easy to reshape the bones and the feet and get them going right. And uh, we can give two of the braces necessary for the children for uh, $34, four of them for 68, and uh, six of them for uh, just over 100, $102. And I'm just really wondering if, if, if every one of you watching wouldn't say, I want to do that. And then let me tell you what we're going to do too. We're going to do 400 surgeries. And we're going to do these in, uh, along with the braces for the children, whatever size they need, whatever age they are to correct things, and what we're doing is that this is a new outreach. Betty, we need an outpouring of love. And I'm always so comfortable when I can say that if you could provide two children a future to walk normally for $34, would that be a good investment? Would you possibly be able to help four or, or six of them? Just ask the Lord. And we have some gifts to send you to help you grow in your spiritual life. But you're actually going to put someone on their feet and like Sheila Walsh so beautifully said, because we do it with an overflow of the love of God, we point them to the source of that love and the way to that love. The way to the Father is through Jesus. No one comes to the Father, he said, but by me. And you know when people, Jesus said, if you see me, you've seen the Father. When they see his body, believers, Christians, behaving in harmony with the heart of the Father, they see the Father, his heart, his love. So when you're giving children an opportunity to walk straight, you're giving them an opportunity to come to know how to really walk straight. 
on the straight and narrow and the foundation that withstands the storms that are sure to come. I know you want to do that. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Go online, Life Today. Dial that number, whichever way you want to go. Take your bank card and use it like a check. And you just use that check, that plastic check, to be someone's miracle. Put them on their feet. Correct that deformity. Love never fails. Please make that special gift right now. Thank you so much for doing it. Children born with birth defects in underdeveloped nations are often overlooked, uncared for, and even abandoned. And for tens of thousands every year born with a condition known as clubfoot, their deformity leads to a struggle to just survive. The good news is there is a simple and life-changing solution. This summer, with your support, Life Outreach will provide 10,000 children with corrective braces that will give them a chance to walk like any normal child. With a cost of $17 per brace, your gift of $34 will help provide two children with corrective braces, $68 will provide for four children, and $102 will help give six children braces and the opportunity to walk. And for children with a much more severe need, gifts of $400, $800, or even $1,200 will help provide life-changing corrective surgery for one, two, or three children in need. With your gift of any amount, we'll send you Beth Moore's devotional, Blessed Mornings and Restful Nights. With your gift of $102 or more to provide six children with corrective braces, you'll also receive the journal edition NIV Bible. Finally, with your gift of $1,200 or more, you may receive Majesty, our 2016 commemorative bronze sculpture. This summer, join with us to give children hope for a future. Let's give them a chance to walk. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. Well, we just say thank you for being a miracle. That's actually what your love makes possible. The beautiful journal edition of the Bible. This is absolutely one of the most beautifully bound Bible. You've got all the large margin area where you can write notes. And I... I mentioned this at the very beginning of the program. This is just phenomenal. Blessed mornings and restful nights. My, how we need that. Beth's devotional book, we're just saying thanks to you for giving a child an opportunity to walk, to even walk perfectly normally. That's what love does. Thank you for watching Life Today. Thank you for being someone's miracle. God bless you, and I know he is. Tomorrow on Life Today, James and Betty talk with Sheila Walsh about issues of concern for the church and our future role as followers of Christ. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.